thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. Alright, Friday night. A couple more things to address on this car. Hoping we get a text back any minute. Somebody just listed on Marketplace a 24 foot trailer, like 30 minutes up the road from me, 20, 30 minutes up the road from me, 3,700 bucks. Uh, that's just my luck though, is they're not messaging me back. Cause I'd be riding right now to go get us a new trailer. Cause our current trailer, I think that's, I think that's 20 foot from that corner to the back. And then the V nose. So 24 foot would put me a little bit more comfort. And for 3,700 bucks or less, I think we could flip that. So we've got a couple things to do on the car real fast. Uh, we finished most of it up this week, but uh, I was off. I took off half day Wednesday, and I don't know if you caught it with the filming, but I worked all half day Wednesday, all day Thursday, and then all day today till 11 p.m. or 11 a.m., sorry. <laughs> and then went home, worked on the Mercedes at the house for the wife, uh, dropped one of our daughters off ice skating rink and decided I'd come get a couple hours in. So John said to check the rear shocks. So we added a bunch of weight and, um, I told him, I said, man, it only dropped like an inch and a, or like a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. Cause I measured it and I was kind of blown away. It didn't drop more than that. Um, and he's like, okay, well we need some shaft showing. So make sure you check the shocks and then, you know, let him know, obviously, cause me and him have been working back and forth to get these, this car set up. Um, so I had to come here earlier to get the scanner for the bins, dealing with a check engine light on it. And I said, well, let me pop underneath the car real fast and look, because I spoke to John after 11 a.m. when we were already closed and I was gone. Pretty sure what we're about to see is that the shocks are completely collapsed all the way with no shaft showing at all, which sucks. So we're gonna have to run up the coals, I think, to get the shaft out of the body of the shock. Let's get this car fired up, let's back it up, um, let's take a peek under there real fast before we jack it up and then let's jack it up and get these rear shocks with a little bit of shaft showing on them All right, so let's back this jewel up I think we should be able to just push it instead of cranking it up Come on Nelly All right. There we go All right now Let's grab our mat and get underneath here and see what we got. Pretty sure I'm gonna not like what I see. Let's see here, we can look over there, that's the easiest. So we barely have any showing at all on that one. And this one is pretty much all the way. So we need to, we need to run these cool springs up a little bit and get a little bit of uh, shaft showing in them. So let's get this thing jacked right. up. So let me show you what we got. I just got the approval from John. Went ahead and set these guys up. So this is what we got now. So we've got about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter of shaft showing up top. He wanted these moved up, uh, what did he say? At least an inch. Um, so I went up an inch pretty much on both sides and he just gave me the go-to. So we are good to go. All right, so that is one thing done. It's actually sitting half of an inch lower than original high, ride height. So the the back is sitting half an inch lower than it originally was. Um, and I should have plenty of room. As y'all know, y'all watch John's video. He's a heavier cat. So when he sits in it, it will obviously squat down some more But than me. But this car is set up to separate. So that's how John has it set up. He has all the bars set up and he has the biases set up where this car separates it doesn't uh squat so that's that's what we're running so we're perfectly fine as long as you make it to the starting line without scrubbing and once you actually take off the car separates so i think we're good to go on that um let's see here what else needs to be done i got to do some electrical diagram work i'm gonna try to do that in the morning with breakfast real fast basically i got to sort out my uh wiring diagram from chris so i guess what i'm gonna do now is maybe try to make a little grounds on this hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these things off of here, um, get the old pins off, S maybe throw some tape on it real fast and sit the hood on there 
and see how close we are to uh, it fitting. And then of course, go ahead and figure out where I wanna put the Zeus fasteners and see if I can go ahead and get the Zeus um, actual fasteners maybe riveted to the car tonight. Um, the plan is that for next week after testing, next week I want to get the hood done and I have a surprise for y'all. I'm not gonna see when this thing comes out and it goes to the State of the Union no prep race, uh, I'm hoping that we have a fresh looking car uh, with a couple of uh, subtle changes, including a hood back on the car. So let's get now, at it. Now, before I dive into that, I forgot one thing that we do have to do on the car is we got us a, another filter. So <laughs> y'all are gonna kill me for this. That oil has still not been changed um, and I'm still not changing it. So I have talked with a few people and there's no right or wrong way to it really it's all about what you're willing to uh do and i know a lot of people are going to not be happy with me about this but choice i felt like the oil was not ready to be changed kevin told me every, he would do every three outings is just his estimate or there's a big or there out of his mouth he said when the motor oil starts smelling like e85 when it smells like fuel it's time for it to go Last couple times, I have not smelt fuel. It looks extremely clean. It smells good. And so I feel like it's not time to go. He said that the three outing rule is not necessarily a precise measurement. Every single car will be different. But definitely, if it starts to smell like fuel, then it's time for it to go. So that's what I went off of. You know the credit card was maxed out. So we didn't have a ton of money to be spending on oil. We're trying to um, get that car, credit card debt down. I have literally almost paid 50 percent of it off from when i blew the motor up second time i had it rebuilt you remember we were nine thousand dollars in the hole when we went back testing and then we actually got put another 1400 in the hole on another car we were about ten thousand in the hole when we first started testing this car when we blew this hood right after we blew this hood off we were about 10 racks in the hole uh i'm about 4500 in the hole right now so i've paid some down but i'm still drowning on this card and i need to get more paid down so i'm trying to spend very wisely and not spend a lot um now i did buy the filter today and we had to order an engine diaper so getting ready for this big race next weekend um needed an engine diaper i'll show you the deal i got on that when that comes in i wanted to do the belly pan i've already purchased the aluminum to belly pan but it's just simply slap out of time randy's car came in my life like a wrecking ball <laughs> and um i was down for like a month not being able to really mess with anything so i just flat up don't have the time to put into um doing the belly pan and all that stuff so i got a chunk of diaper on it somehow it's just got to be chunked on there hopefully it don't melt the straps to get through that race and then we can fine tune stuff if we want so um before we do the hood let's do the more important things let's go ahead at least throw a filter in it and let's bust that clear view open and at least clean that out and let's smell the oil just to make sure we're still in the clear and um I possibly be ordering some new oil for it for the state of the union race. Let's get at it. And I know y'all probably gonna kill me in the comment section over this motor oil that is cheaper than a motor. And I understand. Man, she's still clean. She's green as can be. Let's do the smell test, even though y'all can't smell it. It really honestly smells like oil to me. I really don't smell an E85. All right, let's check the oil level. When I pulled that out, it was all over the dipstick because I haven't, I didn't clean it off. So let's see here. We're good. Man, we are right there where we need to be in the hash marks. So after we do this oil change, uh, drop the filter. You know, we'll probably have to add like a quart to it maybe, uh, fresh oil to get it back to the right height, then we'll check it again tomorrow before we start making passes on it. All right, let's change this filter. All right. Man, boy, she was, she was a little bit tight. I should just take the whole front bumper off. That's kind of the whole point of having Zeus fasteners is to be able to take the whole front bumper off. And then I don't even do it because I'm lazy. Let that drain out. Let's get this new one on here. Let's find a razor blade. It's a body shot, right? There's razor blades everywhere, literally, always. And there's what I run, just in case anybody's wondering. Guess we better 
I go get some motor oil out the trailer. If not, I'm gonna deal with that in the comments of drying it up, starting it up without oil in the filter, even though I normally would not do that. All right, now let's see how matter what it gets at me for this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use up some of this motor craft that I had bought in here. Just mix it in, top it off. Instead of burning up my nice stuff, because I'm currently running, what are we running? I'm not Schaefer's. So we're currently running Brad Penn. But I had already bought this. I'm not rich. For some reason, a lot of people think that I'm like made of money. I'm budget just like y'all. It's took me five years to get this point. Let's get this thing screwed on. Always got to put a little oil around the the O-ring, right? All right, let's put this guy on. All right, let's check out what we got before we drop the clear view. And I did, for the most part, clean this out. Clean it out with a pressure washer. I think there's black paint off the filter. As you can see, the paint's busted where I was turning it. And I know I'm going to get the comments. trying to smell it man i don't know kind of has a little bit i think we'll t i think i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna test on this obviously because it's literally in the morning and then we will swap the oil out before the big race so at least the filters will be done and then all i have to do is swap the oil out i'm not gonna change the filters again but this stuff I don't see anything bad in there. We're going to check the clear view because it should catch technically all the big stuff before it gets to this filter. I know some of y'all are going to say get a filter tool and cut it open, but it's kind of the point of the clear view. So let's get, let's get it opened up. I guess that thing's going to make a mess. Honestly, never checked it. Let's see here. I think I need to hit a little bit of air to it first to get the oil off the top to push it back down so that it's not so messy and then we will crack these bolts open in the top and we'll take it apart and see what we got all right i put this down here just in case we drop anything but nothing come out so this is the first time i've ever took this thing apart so i wasn't 100 sure what's gonna happen on a fun note the dude with the trailer did just message me back and i'm trying to set up a time to go see it in the morning Oh, looks like we got lots of trash down in there. All right, let's get this one out of the way. Let's just sit that guy. I'm going to get these washers off before I lose them. Turn that one upside down. Get this screen out of there. All right. Turn the light on on the yeah, camera. You messed me back with trailers, so we're going to try to go look at that in the morning. So that don't look terrible. I mean, a lot of people said that be careful with the clear views because they will freak you out. Um, it don't really freak me out at all. I'm really not. It's a bunch of black stuff. Uh, barren material, I believe, would be copperish. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But man, that just, I don't even know what it is. What do y'all think the black stuff is? Hmm. It is crazy how much that captures though. I've got the way I've got mine plumbed is I have this plumbed in before the other filter. So the fuel goes through here or the oil goes through here so that it will collect the trash so I can see it. And then anything that makes its way through this filter then goes into your normal spin on filter. So the normal spin on filter shouldn't be doing too much, but it's just kind of a secondary backup to this one. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. I personally don't know a lot about motors, but I think that's uh, perfectly fine. I mean, I don't really see, I know I can probably see it better than y'all can in person, but I don't really see no copper chunks or a lot of metal or nothing. I just see a lot of that black. Um, and honestly, you got to remember that we did originally, we redid one of these burn down tubes. So we cut one of these valve covers and we did a hole saw in it. Uh, we grinded on it a little bit. Uh, I flushed it out with brake parts cleaner. 
but uh you know i can only get so much of it out so that had cutting on it and then that should be it that was the only fresh thing that was done i was trying to look down there and see what's going on uh fresh thing that was done to the motor because it was just rebuilt uh so this could be a bunch of black plastic shavings that's been flushed out of that valve cover and that valve cover was also used both of these valve covers was off a used motor that one had already been on the motor before we blew it up this one was put on the motor uh I think it was this one or that one maybe that one whichever one one was put on the motor after tkm rebuilt it for the second time um so one comes straight off of a junkyard motor and then was put straight on a fresh motor even though i flushed it the best i could so it could be some crap out of the valve cover and the rest of it could just be whatever i don't know let me know in the comment i'm gonna take a picture of it uh save it just in case and I need to, I guess, start counting how many passes I have on the motor and all that. I guess I need to start getting a little more organized now that we are we're still testing, but we're trying to go towards actual racing. As you can see, that's what I'm literally doing here. Um, so I probably need to get a little more organized on keeping track of all my data and stuff. But let me photograph this and put this back together. And I did just shoot Kevin an email with the two things and said, check this out, you're my engine's daddy. So I figured I would show you uh, what it looks like. We'll see what Kevin says. And yes, I did see if you're on Facebook, uh, this, I think his name is Jake, whatever that's been passing around, or Josh, whoever the dude is, uh, about the clear views. He's been talking smack about them. Uh, his was a spin on one uh, from my research, the spin on filter housings and the uh, ones like this that don't spin on are a little bit different uh, basically the top part is the same but the bottom part you know filters through another filter um, mine just goes in and out through that um, and anyway I had shared the post where the owner of the Clearview had put his response up on the internet and then this Josh or Jake whoever he is wanted to actually share another link underneath my post on facebook about of his newest video um and i basically told him to take his bs on somewhere um not very welcoming to somebody coming on my personal facebook page I'm not even friends with the cat i guess he's just going through everybody's shares and literally just posting this new youtube video uh whatever it is to everybody that shares the one from the clearview manufacturer um I didn't even watch it. I'm not giving him no time of the day. Uh, this Clearview company has built, obviously, a good product uh, that's been around for a while. There's been a lot of motors that have, you know, ran for a very long time with the Clearview with no issue at all. Uh, if uh, me being a business owner, if I understand that if there was an issue with the product, it would have already showed its face. Uh, just this one uh, Joe guy, Josh, Jerry, John, whatever his name is. Uh, it wouldn't have just all of a sudden happened to one cat, okay? It would have already showed its face. That's not how a failure works on a product. That's why when you have a, a brand new car that comes out and it gets a recall, it's because there's been multiple failures, okay? And the same thing with the Lemon brand on a car. You know, if it can't be repaired, it gets branded to Lemon when it's brand new. It only applies to a brand new car, not a used car. There's a quick fact if you didn't know that. It does not apply to used cars. But there's no way that this guy comes out and all of a sudden finds a flaw in a product that nobody else has ever found all the engine builders and everything like it's just not that's just not how it works man so no i'm not taking my clear view off no i'm not worried about it and um I told that cat is not welcome to post his bull crap on my page